I think the young lady's name is Morgan, and she talks about some random guy from Atlanta. I, would, I just want to say that. This is yet another case of why it's important to not be male-centered. And first, I just want to say she's grown. She can do whatever she wants to do. And for anybody who's like, this ain't any of our business when you post it, you make it other people's business. So you get out of my business and get the fuck off my page if you have a problem with it. So what I'm going to say is when you are not male-centered, you can remove yourself from the situation and say, you know what, this guy's track record is not a good one. Hmm, it's tax season right now. That's interesting. He's coming around now. He doesn't really provide for his child and now all of a sudden he's whining and dining me. Hmm. This dude is just coming out random out of nowhere. He's not really consistent. You know what? I'm going to hit next on this. This isn't a good candidate for my attention. But when you're male centered, when you let your loneliness or whatever you're feeling get the best of you, then you say to yourself, oh, <laughs> he's showing me attention. Yay. And then you lose your fucking mind and you lose your judgment and you go making irrational decisions. Decentering men does not mean that you cannot want a relationship or to be married. It does not mean that you can't date. It just means that you don't lose your fucking common sense because some guy comes along and gives you 15 minutes of attention and possibly some limp dick D. And as the Blanche Devereaux of TikTok, I can honestly tell you that sometimes with those toxic men, the D is really good. But even in those situations where you just use them for, you know, what that, um, your head doesn't fall off your shoulders. You still can use your common sense and you can properly compartmentalize the situation. This is just sex. He is not a good person to have a relationship with or to get involved with outside of that. Now, listen to Auntie Jules or your sister Jules or your for however you see me. I wouldn't even get involved with them for the D. I'm talking from experience. All those situations like that are super, super dangerous. So I'll use myself as an example. I get asked out all the time. I've gone out on dates, but because I'm not male-centered, I'm able to say, you know what, regardless of the fact of whether or not this guy is cute or whatever I might be feeling at the moment, he is not a good fucking person. He said some smart ass shit. He did something and I noticed it and it didn't make me feel good. So you know what, fuck him, I'm a block his ass. And then I move on with my life, plain and simple. That guy is not the one for me end of discussion. Now, old me would be like, well, I know he said this particular thing that bothered me, but mm, maybe he was just having a bad day. And I'm pretty sure he's a good guy once I really get to know him. Maybe I said something that bothered him and he was just reacting to like, I would try to rationalize staying with someone who makes absolutely no sense for me to be around. And, and sometimes I just want, I just want you to know this. Sometimes things are a, simply a canon event. You know, sometimes people just got to learn and as painful as it is, you just got to sit back and be like, you know, at least I, you know, said something, you know, at least they know that I'll be their biggest support if shit hits the fan. You know, I hope I'm wrong, but sometimes people have to learn the hard way. I have seen some of the most intelligent, beautiful, amazing women crumble to the ground because of a man. And I'm sure people have seen me plenty of times in my life fall apart because of a man. I know it's happened. So at the end of the day, we have to acknowledge that this is just going to be something that she's going to have to learn on her own. But we can also use the situation to learn from it and learn the importance of not being male-centered and relationship-obsessed.